Alrighty, hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here. Um, we're gonna go through part one of the four part fertility series that I have prepared for you. Now I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a blend between Eastern and Western medicine. And if you like more information on this, I did do longer episodes on this on my podcast. I just wanted to use these videos to give you a little visual as well as just a quick introduction to this so that you can start applying some of these tactics right away to your daily, weekly, monthly routine to help regulate your cycle and help boost your fertility overall. So starting off with this, um, and just as a background, um, I am licensed in acupuncture and Chinese medicine. I'm also a functional medicine practitioner, and I'm the author of the books, The Female Fat Solution and The Female Menopause Solution, but this is on Amazon. And again, you can subscribe to my YouTube and my podcast, The Female Health Solution, just to make sure you're staying updated on everything. So, okay, week one here, week one, this is going to be day one of the period. So the day that your period is going to actually start, um, there are a lot of things that we utilize to help kick off this transition. Now, again, if you are trying to make sure you have your period on a regular cycle, it's not helpful just to work on it like one or two days out of the month. It's going to be everything that you did leading up to this point that helps your cycle start on time, that helps your period start when it should start. Now, there are a lot of things hormonally, hormonally, chemically that happen in the body that trigger the start of your period. And if you're missing out on some of these things or you're coming into this with a lot of stress or nutrient depletion, things like that, then the signals that should be set off to start your period don't happen. So things that I really talk about are, again, eating for your cycle, doing nutrition for your cycle, which I outline in my book, and I have a ton of videos on. Um, these are also things that I teach you how to do in my programs, as well as seed cycling. So again, days one through 14, so this would qualify here. We would be utilizing pumpkin and flax seed every day, as well as utilizing tinctures, and we'd be focused on the estrobalance balance tincture during this time. So this would be when you'd switch over from the progesterone balance to the estrobalance. balance. That's going to actually help trigger and kick off the start of your cycle. When you are used to utilizing tools like this to help your cycle regulate, it helps keep your cycle more consistent overall. Remember, your hormones are impressionable. They can be thrown off by stress and other things like that. So that means that by following a regulated pattern with your nutrition, with your supplements and herbs, that that can actually help as a defense against other things throwing your cycle off. So that's why I recommend using a lot of these things for so many women. So day one is the first day of the period. And if you're wondering, oh my gosh, what if I have my period and then it stops for a day and then it starts up again, we're going to be looking at something more like adrenal fatigue. So keep in mind the stuff that I'm going to cover here in the four part fertility series, talking about some specific things is really for if you have a fairly regular cycle and you don't have any wonky patterns going on. If you do have wonky patterns, your basal body temperature rises, drops when it shouldn't and all these things, or your hormones are not regulated, this is where Dutch testing comes into play and we can understand what your body is doing specifically so that we can really help target what's going on to get it onto this regulated path. But again, I am gonna cover things that you can start off right away. Like again, using tinctures, using seeds, um, and using nutrition for your cycle. Those are all things you can do on a regular basis to help your system regulate. So, okay. So day one, first day of the period. Now, again, there's going to be a lot of different things happening internally, um, a shift and change in hormone. This is actually where your estrogen and progesterone levels are at the lowest throughout the entire month. Remember, I'm, I'm going to draw this really, really quick. This, if this is right, the cycle, Day one, day 14, day 28 here. When we look at this, and again, I'm drawing this just real quick, but estrogen is more elevated in the first part, but it's still really low. We're talking about the first few days here. We're really talking about the first few days. Progesterone elevates and should be elevated more in the second part. But again, the first few days, the first you know three, four, five days, you are gonna have the lowest amount of hormone in your body as you do the entire month. And this is why sometimes people say, this is why your body is most like a man when you're actually on your period because your estrogen and progesterone levels are so low naturally, they should be, right? And this is also when, because those hormone shift and changes happen, it has dropped, plummeted, that those hormone levels cause the um, lack of blood and nutrient to the endometrial tissue within your uterus, cause that thinning and then cause it to shed starting your period. 
So that's kind of what's happening physically with your body. This is also going to be a drop, a drop in that basal body temperature. When this happens and when estrogen is more dominant, we want that basal body temperature to be lower. We want it to be a lot lower during this point. So if you have it drop and then spike and drop all within this first two weeks, not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. So again, track these things. Basal body temperature, again, is just your temperature first thing in the morning. So wake up, don't drink water, don't get out of bed, don't do anything else. Take your temperature, write it down or record it in an app. And that can give you a really close look at what's happening with your cycle right here, okay? So that's the first part of this. Um, in Eastern medicine and energetically, what we'd be looking at is that yang energy moving towards yin, right? This is hot, this is fiery, everything else, and this is cooler and um, slower a little bit. So we want that shift and change to happen. Now also, we want the energy to overall flow down. When we talk about Eastern medicine in general, um, the conception vessel, which runs right along the center of your body all the way down, we want that to open up and move the blood down. So we want a lot of that energy towards the lower part of our body. Massage your feet, massage your lower legs, push some of those points in the bottom of your feet. It's probably gonna feel really good and it actually helps trigger the start of moving that energy down. We don't want the energy to be so up and located in our abdomen anymore. We want to trigger it and fire it down. And when I do acupuncture, there's actually specific points that I really target that are in the feet, the lower legs, everything else that are targeted for this specifically. This is to trigger the release and letdown from the uterus. And it's amazing at how this happens. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm on day 29 or day 30, I really feel like my period should start, what do I do? Or if my period just started, how can I support my body? Massage those feet, lower legs, use some of those pressure points around your knees and shins. Just again, it there are specific points, but you're still gonna be you know, encouraging that energy to come down and flow down to the lower part of your body. Again, helping and assisting the shift and change in chi in your body. So. Again, that's the Eastern medicine part of it. So sometimes people listening to that is like, that sounds weird. The more you lean into how the body shifts and changes throughout the month, the more amazing things that you can notice shift and change with this. So that's what I got for you today. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Again, below this video, you can you know click the link, learn more about utilizing tinctures, things like that. These are easy, convenient things to stay consistent with that have a huge impact on your hormones and helping you stay regulated overall with your cycle. So tune in for the next video that I'm going to be talking about moving into the second week here and moving into ovulation, which is a really important thing when we're talking about hormones and fertility.